Hello everyone, Vanguard of Valor here, and welcome back to the Sunless Sea. Now we're here again after quite a while, but we're back with a mission. First of all, we're going to start by talking to some of our officers we haven't spoken to in a while. Now I believe in particular our gunnery officer needs something? Nope, not her. Let's see who else it might be. Check out the officers. Is it our determined doctor? Can we try to speak to him? We can dine with him. He'll bring the wine, he tells us. Do we happen to have any more of that delightful Z-trout? No matter. If we speak to him... And no, they're not restless elements! He slams his hands down on the table. Do you not see, Captain? Every year, the bazaar! She devours us! From within! The rich dream honey dreams of the poor shovel laker with their bare hands in the streets, just to earn a few echoes to buy food. And above it all, the masters and the... He never does get around to answering our actual question, whether we enjoyed the main course. So we can speak to him, but it looks like he doesn't tell us anything new, which is fair enough. Now what else can we do here? We speak to our satisfied magician? He's satisfied. I think he's done his train of events. Tireless mechanic? I'm pretty sure he's done. Maybe his daughter needs to speak to her mother in Ma Naples. But the bandaged poissonnier, he might have more to do. The bandaged poissonnier wants a fluke core or an elegiac cockatoo. We could give him the flute core, but I think we're going to hold on to this one. I have a feeling this would be better served elsewhere for now. I think we need two more of these, because we need one of these to give to the principals, and we have one of these we need to give to the um, the curator. So we're going to need to go and fight more flukes, but I believe this might work out for us. But we can't... I don't want to give this to him right now. Is there anybody else we can speak to? It's worth double checking to see what these guys need. The irrepressible cannoneer doesn't need anything. Maybe his daughter doesn't need anything else? No. Do a quick look through here. What about the brisk campaigner? Oh, yes, another step. Right, we're trying to treat her an essence. Right now, we need to get her a zoop. Good thing I didn't sell off my muter salts. I need those. So if we go get one more zoop, which I think we can get next time we go up to um, Mount Palmerston we should be able to move on with this we'll have to do that what else can we do here anybody else we can speak to the scarred sister we can drop off somewhere but she won't speak to us Carnelian exile can I speak to you I can I don't know if I really want to spend a searing enigma to talk to her maybe we'll come back to her Okay, so we know a bunch of things we have to do again there. That's good. What we're going to do right here, I think, let's check the map quickly. So, right now we have a couple of things going on. All kinds of things all around the world. For one thing, we have a location, number of locations still to find, because we haven't actually found all the underwater areas. We still have to do jobs at the Salt Lions, but that'll take a while. The big thing I want to do right now is go to Port Cecil, because in Port Cecil we can pass off our final playing piece, and we should be able to finish off the adventure there, which could be fun. Then, we're going to want to go over to... probably up to Mount Palmerston, so we can get the Zoop, so we can help our first campaigner. What else do we need to do? We might want to go to Irem, so we can see if maybe that has something to do with what the person in the Chelinit wanted, because they were talking about the end of the ocean, and I have a feeling something to do with Irem. So we could go... We could go fall in London, we could work our way across to Port Cecil, up to Mount Palmerston, get Irem, try and make our way down to the Chelinit, and then make our way back. That's probably a pretty hefty journey, so that might be good enough. There seem to be a bunch of locations here that need marking, too. This looks like it's a boat, but these ones don't have anything there, so those might be good to check out on the way. So if we're sailing from here through to Port Cecil, we can do that. I might want to also pick up another mirror catch box if we're going through back around this way, because that way I can grab some more sunlight at Aestival, because I'm pretty sure the Fathom King wants some. I was taking a look oh, I was taking a look at some of the items in our journal, and the Fathom King wants where is it? Uh, here it is. He wants a sunlight, or something which will pass for sunlight, so Sunlight itself will probably do that one. A willing guest, an eldest end. I think this might have to do with the principles. We'll see when we get there. 
or or the uh, curator. I'm sure one of those will count for that. And then a miracle of science, we have one on board. Legend's heart, I don't know what we're gonna do for that. But overall, I think that's a, probably a pretty good course for us. If we go back to Fallen London, make our way right out the middle, we can check out these locations, hit Port Cecil, head up, head down, and then head back. And hopefully that'll get us a good selection of rewards here. So that's probably what we're gonna try. And we'll see what happens on the way. So let's give it a look and see what the world has in store for us. I think actually we're just gonna surface here. I can't surface here. I can surface here. Because we're right beside London. We might as well pop back up and give this mission a go. So there's a bit of our next plan. Hopefully that is interesting to you so you kind of know what we're getting into here. But yeah, basically the idea is we have a whole bunch of jobs in progress that I had to like read up on so I could remember what they were. <laughs> go back through our journal entries and whatnot and figure out what we actually had to do. So now that I kind of remember more what we're doing, we should be able to do some of it. Let's pop in here and cash in a little bit more as well, because we should have a little bit more hold space. Two more, yep. Yeah. So we'll drop by... Actually, you know what? We're going to buy some coffee before we go, because we're probably going to need some if we want to actually do anything in Irem. So we'll buy a bag of coffee beans. That'll be important. Is there anything else here we need? I don't think so. I might pick up the romantic literature and come back and do that on the way back, too, because that would make sense. Okay. I think that's all we need, because with that, let's drop by the Dark Spectacle of Admiral and pick up one more port report. Let's give him the port report on something that we're going to be going to, so we can get it again. Uh, Khan's Shadow we could probably go to again. Most of these we're going to be going to again, so I kind of messed up my plans here. Hmm. Yeah, I think we may have uh, not planned this out as well as we could have. That's fine. That's fine. Let's pass off Egul. Apparently that's Station 6. Interesting. Gives us 45 Echoes, a favor, a fuel, and a port report. We've now surveyed Egul. Interesting. Do we have anything else in our hold we can get rid of? We need the Muter Salt. I don't need the Live Specimen. I can cash that in. I can get rid of the Strange Catch, too. And I can probably get rid of the Candles. Everything else we'll hold on to. So let's get rid of that stuff quickly while we're here. Can I sell the candles for any decent amount? It's not great, but they're just taking up space. And I think it'll be better for us if we sell them for the time being. Um, what else did we want to get rid of? We want to get rid of the live specimen, which we can trade in elsewhere. Can I sell the live catch? I don't think I can. Nope, doesn't look like it. Alright, that's fine. Head over to the Alarming Scholar. And we'll sell him our live specimen. There we go. Gained another 100 echoes off of that. And that should give us a bunch more inventory space. That gives us four more. So we can submit some more port reports and get some more fuel. The more inventory space we have, the better, really. Give them Irem, which will get us some more fuel. We're going to be going there anyway. Give them Khan's Shadow, because we're probably going to stop in there to buy another mirror catch box. We'll get rid of that one. What else can I give out that we're going to be going to? King Eater Castle, we might not go down to. Gant Pole, we probably will stop in at. You're saying you've been... where? Here they come, the smirking requests from every captain in the place, all wanting to know if we found their lost pocket watches. By the time the clerk pays up, it's clear he's paying more from amusement than the information. Got 60 echoes, though, and a favor and a fuel. Alright. What else can we give him? Um, let's give him Fathom King's Hold, because we're probably going to stop in there, too. That'll give us 30 echoes and a fuel. There we go. Okay. We're in good shape right now. I think it's about time for us to move on, though, and keep looking around, because there may be some good stuff to do out on the Z. For now, we're off. So we have a very distinct goal this time, which should help us actually do what we need to do, and we have a quite a large capacity for more gear this time, which should also help. We're going to wander out, <coughs> check out some potential undersea locations, and see if we can't do some good in the world. Let's see what happens. Did I get recent news? I hope so. There's some, some places that needed recent news. 
I believe I did, but I don't know for sure. Oh well. Either way, we've already headed out. A spy walks the ship. They're good. Very good. Were it not for a single envelope sitting face up instead of down on our desk, we might never have noticed. We can search every cap and open every lockbox. We only have a 17% chance of success. Let's give it a try. Bah! Nope. Oh, dang it. Slip through the net. The crew is not informed of the precise reason for the search. They stare at each other suspiciously. Good. Next time, perhaps they'll be more alert. We lost a move in the great game. I think this has happened before, too. I think we've lost more than one of those. Our veils are our worst skill, which uh, probably isn't for the best, but so it goes. Oh, well. Now let's move on. we got plenty of sailing to do. We've got lots of things we want to stop in on, which is potentially going to make things difficult for me. We're going to just sail past the Shepherd Isles here. I may drop underwater. Yeah, why not? Let's see what's underwater here. I don't know if we've come through this area underwater yet. So we went north last time and south previously. I don't think we've actually just gone straight east. There might be all kinds of interesting things under here. All we know for now is that something awaits us, which might be interesting. We'll head over towards the Salt Lions, because I believe that's where our next hidden location is. We don't know much about these places, but they don't have names, which makes me question them. It's dark under the sea, though. And it's hard to know what's out there until you get too close. Something over here. What are you? What are you? You're a wreck ship. Well, that's not good. Let's try and wreck this wreck ship. And back out of its range if we can. If it can't shoot us, then we're in a much better position. Did it submerge just there? I think it did. Well, we'll just keep shooting it from a safe distance where it can't do much back. Come on now. Don't be giving me any trouble. And comboed. There we go. Alright, we survived it. Let's head down here and see what the wreck ship has for us. We've defeated it. We could send a boarding party, or we could just destroy them utterly. Uh, let's try it and see what happens. We'll send a boarding party. We haven't done this before. I imagine we're going to lose some crew, but we'll give it a try. We succeeded. Never mind. We can't prepare a boarding party. Any plan goes out of the porthole a minute our boots touch the deck of a strange vessel. Not that you can't prepare a boarding party. In this case, it seems these pirates like to play dead in person as well. Fortunately, our crew aren't the kind to be fooled twice. They return with clean cutlasses and bloody boots. Some are even smiling. We gain two fuel, two supplies, and 108 echoes. Interesting. Alright, where are we headed to now? We're heading up this way. We are running low on air, so it's about time we pop back up, I think. This looks to be flowing the wrong way anyway, so we might as well head up to the surface and sail up there where it's a little bit easier. As we venture into the unknown, or rather venture towards the known, the unknown is below though, where things are much weirder. The extra supplies and fuel definitely will not go amiss though. I wonder if we can finally clear in this square of map which has been determined as unknown. There we go, finally. There's an angler crab over there, but we're not going to worry too much about him. We are, however, going to head back below. I know we're passing up lots of opportunities to get more locations for more of our wonderful free rewards by dropping back to the uh, Admiral with our port reports, but I feel like it's probably worthwhile here, because we just found a new location. We found Rack, the city of murderers. Oh, good. Oh, good. Well, let's stop in here and see what it's all about. Rack, 
earn your entry. The wreckers surround our docked submarine. We can tell them our exploits, or we can just fight them. The wreckers surround our docked submarine. They greet us with crooked blades and rusted blunderbusses. Easy, trespasser. You want in, you prove you belong here. Let's impress them with tales of our daring. Our words are like hooks in their ears. The violence drags them where we will. By the end, they've sheepishly lowered their weapons before the raising them again in a great cheer, sounding like the thundering of cannon fire. Damn fine, trespasser. Welcome to Rack. Okay, then. Ships lured by false promises and lights litter the Z-floor. The broken hulls make a city for the wreckers. The citizens are in constant motion, working to survive and appease the fair king, who sits deep within the city on his wheeled throne. Well, we could buy an audience with the fair king, but we need Sintelac for that. We could go wrecking, but we need a relationship with the fair king for that. Interesting. We can eavesdrop on the wreckers, but we need to know them for that. As with this. Hmm. Provide for a disgraced tether priest so he may provide for us. Interesting. Lots of things going on here. I thought we had somebody who wanted us to come here, but apparently not. Let's compile a port report. The wreckers know their duties. The poets write enticing lies. Talkers travel to other ports to spread them. Miners construct the devices which will sink the lured ships, and salvagers strip them bare. The most celebrated of the wreckers wear no special costume, but are easily identified. They mumble poems in Arabic to themselves. They whistle lively tunes in new scales. They wear heavy gloves and carry silver clippers with which to cultivate tether. Hmm. We can consider the state of the city. Let's see what happens here. Stores are running low. There is enough food to subsist for a time, but the poets may soon be out of paper, and the miners will be able to make their explosives if their powder isn't refreshed. But the fair king ensures there is order. He goes without, just as his subjects do and he sees that those who forsake their work for despair are flogged. Now we can go to the shops, and let's also follow an echo through the halls. Many wreckers sing, but none quite like this. Careful, trespasser. A worker warns you as you approach. He escaped from doubt. Mind your manners, or you might lose an ear. An escaped composer's song. Hmm. Interesting. Sell your drowny hymn to the composer. Sell your drowny love song to the composer. Sell your drowny song in counterpoint to the composer. Interesting. He looks up from a water-warped pianoforte, adjusting his glasses. His hand is stained with ink. There is music written on the wallpaper behind him. Take this with you, says the composer. It's a score scratched into a sheet of seaweed. The composer explains, Well, I languished in a cell in Dahut, dining on drowny slops. This is the music I wished to have. You glance over the score. The tune suggests the impact of metal and stone. A broken shell. A bubble of air slowly rising to the surface. This is not a cheerful song for a submarine. There is a lady who is imprisoned alongside me. I don't even know her name, but her courage kept me whole. If you go there, rescue her. There is no one less deserving of a cell in that place. Okay. We have a song of broken hulls, and we have a request to rescue someone from a drowny prison. That sounds safe, right? Let's check the shops here. Ah, they mostly offer in supplies. Interesting. So I can buy firkin honey, or firkin a prisoner's honey, rather, for some supplies. I can buy coffee beans for supplies, or... I can buy fuel or supplies, but the supplies are very expensive. Good to know. Alright then, let's move on. We've visited Rack and have discovered some new people. Interestingly enough, stopping in at a location like this seems to fill up your, your air supply, which is good to know. Now there might be another neighboring location right next door, so we're going to head over there and find out. It might just be like a boat. There's one down there too, I think I missed. There might be one right here, though, so we're going to head over here and see what this is, and then we'll move on from there. <laughs> there is. It's a neighboring cities here. Is this the one of... This is Nook. Hmm. Interesting. 
That looks unpleasant. <laughs> wow. Okay. A gap in this colossal sea monster's throat has been forced open with thick heart metal beams. They strain under the pressure, but hold. As we pass through, our submarine lights pass over a message carved in a floating piece of some unfortunate's hull. Beyond is Nook. Beyond is freedom. Beyond is... The rest is scratched out. Water presses against the airlock door. The breathing and slithering of the beast gives it the rhythm of a drumbeat. The effects of Palong stays in Nook can be released in Aigul. Well, let's go check it out then. Trespasser in freedom. You don your heavy diving suit and give the order to cycle the airlock. Water rushes in and you begin the slow descent down into the port. It soon becomes obvious that you are overdressed for the occasion. The people of Nook swim and breathe in the cloudy maw water with no apparent discomfort. Most are naked, with just a few clad in rotten rags that stream from their skin with no concern for modesty. None will communicate with you, if they even can. Those who acknowledge our presence just laugh silently at our bulky suit and unnecessary air hose. We'll need a different approach. We can descend naked into Nook instead. Okay, let's give it a try. We undress every button, every stitch. The door opens. Ice-cold water rushes upwards. Instinct holds our mouth shut. Ten seconds. Twenty seconds. Our lungs burn, holding in that last gulp of air. Our legs thrash. We can't hold it in. It escapes. We're choking on water. It forces its way into our lungs. The taste of burning salt suffocating every attempt to gasp, scream, or... Then, through the exhaustion and panic, you realize you're breathing. It's hard work. Your lungs fight against the weight, but it's enough. You can tolerate it, for now. The liberal application of wine will make this process easier. Okay, in the future, bring a cask. Fair enough, getting drunk makes it easier to breathe the water. The beast doesn't like me here, though. What do we do here? Very strange indeed. A torn, pinned-back cavity in the flesh wall offers access to the city's monstrous host. Razor-sharp teeth the size of buildings jut from fatty, garnet-red flesh. Many teeth have been quarried out into homes, barricaded by scraps of wood from shipwrecks. Let's uh, make a port report first. See what happens. Ah, no pen, of course. We'll just have to record what we remember when we're back in the submarine. Let's try to mingle. Maybe that we're now uh, here, we can try this. They acknowledge our presence, but little more. Most shrink back, assuming we mean harm. Others deliberately swim just above us in a crude attempt at intimidation. They carry bone knives or tooth-tipped spears. A few gesture to us. In welcome? Invitation? It's unclear. The slightly glutinous water makes speech impossible, so the natives have developed a language of signs. We can interpret the most basic. A finger pulled across the throat, for example, is one of the more polite invitations to, dis to depart. Okay, turns out they don't like us here. Hmm. We could swim downwards, that seems like a bad idea. Let's swim upwards to the Great Maw and see what's going on here. Interesting. A twitching cathedral of ivory, flesh, and decay. The Maw curves far enough to be swallowed by the darkness of the Z. Entire shipwrecks have been mulched between hooked teeth at Dwarf London's mightiest monuments. Let's gaze up through the Maw and see what happens. Gained one nook, a taste for freedom. I don't know what this is going to do, but I don't like it. A light glitters where the far stars shine on the surface of the Z, framed by the Maw's dormant teeth. How ancient is this creature? What happens if it swallows? Ah, we no longer have any tolerance for nook water. It's time to leave. Alright, fair enough. Return to the crew. Air again. How refreshing. Good. All is well. Anything that happened in Nook shall remain in Nook. Okay, that was weird. 
We'll have to come back here later, I guess, and discover what happens when things go horribly wrong. But for now, we're alive, and that's the important thing. Just grab a couple other pieces of fuel, just for the length of our journey is bound to be. And we'll head back on our way. Well then. No wonder we missed Rack and Nook the first time. They were right beside each other. Let's head back down here. Actually, no. I believe this one is a boat, so we'll skip that one. We may head back to Scrimshander. I don't know if we need to go there right now, though. Port Cecil is our main objective, but I actually kind of want to scoot down towards the Khan's Shadow first, so we can get a Mirror Catch box, so we can get Light first, and we come back, we can go to the Fathom King's Hold and trade it in. So let me head down this way first. You know what? Maybe we'll get Port Cecil on the way back? No, let's go to Port Cecil first. I'm a little bit concerned about our resource usage. I have a feeling that we're going to not have enough space for all the things that might find down here. But, uh, we will see. We will undoubtedly see. Big abyss right there. Something's gleaming nearby, but I don't know what it is or where it is. We're approaching the Sea of Lilies, though, so a scrimshaw nearby. We could stop in here, but I don't think we're done with whatever we could be doing. So let's pop up. We're not going to stop in a scrimshander, but we will make a port for port nearby. Our terror is increasing, as usual, so we'll see what we can do about that, too. Nup Mid Harbor won't have much for us, but we might as well stop by since we're here. And grab another... Uh, oh, did I not cash in my port report on Wisdom? I guess I didn't. Oh well. Fair enough. On we go then. We have plenty of fuel to burn. Now, the Conant itself, I don't know if it holds anything in particular we're interested in, but we might see if there's something interesting going on there. We might as well drop in. I don't know if it's going to be much good to us, though. As you may have noticed previously, the Conant is not so great for getting port reports, because they watch you, and once you're... Uh popularity, let's just say. It gets out of control, it makes it hard to accomplish much here. But we'll deal with what we gotta deal with. We'll drop by in Khan's Glory and Khan's Heart and see if either of them will have anything useful to us. Docking in Khan's Glory, I don't think will help us much at all. We can do uh, some favors for the Timon, but I need those pearls to combine with the Zoob to help our friend. And I still can't do this because we're still not uh, friendly enough. I guess this isn't going to help. Alright. As I suspected, there's not much for us here, but we do have a bunch of jobs to do, so we'll keep going and see what we can't accomplish in a hurry. Khan's Heart, I don't think it has anything important for us either, but we'll check in with their Nephrite Quarter and we might have something valuable here still. Let's stop in and see what they've got. Oh, have to get the Nephrite Quarter access first. Okay, we can take tea. That might not be bad. 50 Echoes for the Terror Reduction, though. I don't know if that's particularly worthwhile, but... Might be better than nothing. Hmm. We have the access to the Nephrite Quarter. There we go. Now we can visit the Shops tab. Is there anything we want here? Not really, it looks like. Could have bought coffee here for cheaper. That would have been good to know. Ah! Empty mirror catch box. Perfect. That's exactly what I came here for. I didn't know it, but it turns out I did. Red Stallion Publishing will also buy three romantic literature. I might buy these on the way back, actually. Because let me see here. What's our map looking like? We're going to be coming to the Fathom King's Hold. If we're here anyway, we can scoot up to Khan's Heart, get the three romantic literature, and drop them off at Abbey Rock on the way back. That probably makes more sense than picking them up and then doing the whole long loop with them in our inventory, so I'll come back and get those later. 
That makes sense. And now I can come straight up to Port Cecil. I don't need to stop in at Khan's Shadow, which should save us a little bit of time. We are getting a little bit low on supplies, but uh, we should be able to manage. We should be able to manage. Let's journey on and see what we see. Yeah, I think that's what we're going to do. We're going to beeline our way up to Port Cecil, and we'll discover what lies up there. On the way, though, we might as well drop under the waves. Because there might be something exciting over here. We already know there's probably some bad things around here, but we'll see what we can find. We know there's still at least one location we haven't found. What are these things? I don't know, but I don't like them. They seem dangerous. Toxic gases and the like, you know? For now, we make our way up to Port Cecil and hope for the best. Lots of darkness here, as the coral above takes up space. So far, there's not a lot down here. I'm kind of okay with this, though. See if we pop up directly into a sea beast. No, nope, not this time. We've made it safely to Port Cecil. All right. In that case, we'll dock. However, we're going to have to end the episode here. Thank you very much for watching, everyone. This has been Vanguard of Valor playing some Sunless Sea for you. If you've enjoyed the episode, let me know what you thought about in the comments, and be sure to come back next time as we see what happens with the principals when we supply the last piece they need. Until then, though, bye bye